evolution. Think about computers. From the first to the fourth generation, it is undeniable that the way we think of computing today has changed. Today, when we think about computers, we think about connectivity and distributiveness. Yet whilst we have made significant technological advancements on Earth, space as a technology has remained stagnant in the Apollo way of doing things. For years, satellites have been designed hardware first, and our dependency on hardware rather than software has left them based on fixed use. And our attachment to hardware first has resulted in a lack of both connectivity and autonomy. Here at Reorbit, we're challenging the designing of satellites by going software first. We're opening up new opportunities by making them reconfigurable, autonomous and interconnected. With talk about mining asteroids, manufacturing in space and going to the moon, isn't it about time we start matching technology with the ambitions of space? It all starts by going software first. That's what Reorbit is doing. Yeah, I think uh, that's a nice way to just wake you all up. Yeah, so when you imagine satellites, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? You, know, you think these are the most advanced piece of equipment that's flying up in space. But the reality is, the iPhone that you have in your hand is much smarter and can do way a lot of functionalities than most of the satellites that are flying in space. And this is what Reorbit is changing by building satellites using software-enabled architectures. Since we founded in early 2020, we've been able to build a world-class team. We have closed multiple tens of millions of euros worth contracts. And I'm Setu, founder and CEO of Reorbit, and this is our story. So we are headquartered in Helsinki, and we have three officers uh, in Stockholm and Argentina. And we have a management team that has multi-decades of experience in some of the Taiwan space companies, such as ISI, Astroscale, and Airbus. And our board is led by Nishan Batra, the chairman and CSO of Nokia Group. And also our board consists of some of the well-known faces in the financial and the public sector. So October 5th, 1957, Sputnik, the first satellite, was launched. Sputnik being the first satellite, it danced around the Earth as a loner. And also, Sputnik was built as a big piece of hardware with very little software intelligence. Now, 68 years have passed. Over 10,000 satellites have been launched. The irony is satellites are still built as loners in space. They don't have the ability to talk to its nearest neighbor, or they don't have the ability to exchange data. Even worse, satellites are still built as big pieces of metallic hardware. And that's what Reorbit is changing by building satellites using software-enabled architectures. So we are now building a software framework as a backbone to our system architecture. And then we treat hardware as a commodity. So whenever we get a customer, we go to the market, procure the best-in-class hardware that exactly suits the requirement of our customer, both on the technical specs, but also on the cost. And then we just glue them around our software architecture. By this way, we create a lot of flexibility in our architectures, but also, what we can do is we could start developing advanced functionalities on top of our software architecture way before we select our hardware components. So today our satellites are designed and built so that they are very autonomous and they can also talk and exchange information with each other. So once you have a system that can talk with each other and be very autonomous, you could start building satellites as node in a network rather than building them as individual entities that are as they are built today. So can you imagine the huge possibilities that can open up when tens of thousands of satellites are all connected, all this data is freely flowing. So we are paving way to the internet revolution of the space industry and doing what Cisco did to the computer industry for the space industry. Over the last three years since we came into existence, we have already closed 35 million euros worth contracts. We are sitting on a huge pipeline worth over 350 million euros, importantly, we are already cash flow positive for first two consecutive years, and we will close this year also with cash flow positivity. And we are almost today touching 50 people, and we are growing very rapidly. And along this humble journey, we have also been recognized by ESA as one of the rising stars 
and we are the only Nordic company to be given that recognition, and also have got some other awards along this way. And today, when generally people think about space industry, people think this is, these, are, these are the stuff that's very far away and has nothing to do with us. In fact, the, the, the thing that we are all sitting here is actually enabled because of the space industry. And space industry is much more closer than what you all think. And now satellites are very fast becoming the new gold. And we are here to exploit and mine this new gold using our software architectures. And thank you. Thank you for listening.